We now are in the crux of having to deal with more patients and fewer doctors. And the way to solve that is really not for doctors to work harder. We know that we can't see more patients than what we already do, but rather to use tools to make it more efficient, to make us more effective in delivering that care. So these, there are many, many, many of these things that are just starting to percolate up now. And what we'll see is that lead adopters, physicians like me and the other physicians that we had on this panel, will be willing to take them, to test them, to use them in their practices, to find out what's valuable for dermatologists, and then hopefully to be able to report that back to our colleagues to say, hey, look, we found something that could really help you. You should take a look at this and see if you can use it in your practice. And so adoption is not high for a number of reasons, right? So there are barriers that are technology. So we're not used to actually having technology between us taking care of patients. So it's very different for us, something that we have to learn as doctors. So the technology itself can be a barrier. There are reimbursement issues, so depending on what it is that you're trying to do, you can't always just go to the, to the payer, to the health insurer, and ask to be reimbursed for it. In many instances you can, and we believe that in the future that that's going to be uniform, that you will be able to be reimbursed for doing telehealth visits in the exact same way that you're reimbursed for seeing patients in person. And we're getting closer and closer to that. It's not there yet, and that's in part is uh, one of the barriers. And then also for on the consumer side or on the patient side. So patients not understanding the technologies, not understanding that this is there for them, but once they do, and once these technologies become inexpensive and, and uh, easy for patients to find and use, then I think that you'll find more pressure from the patient side to help us doctors move in the right direction and say, no, we really need to adopt these technologies because this is what our patients are asking for. One of the, our panelists said it very well when he said that brain plus computer is greater than just brain. So I think that as we become more used to using the tools to enhance what it is that we do and find the value in these things in the next three to five years, we'll see many more of these tools that help us with diagnoses, help us to make differential diagnoses, and will be much more likely for us to actually adopt them and use them actively in our practice. We talked even about Google Glass briefly, you know, glasses that you can actually put on to help you as a clinician when you're in the office. So there's a technology that's available today that we're starting to see some early adopters use and that I think that there's no doubt in five years or 10 years from now will be very powerful tools for us to use just in the same way that physicians were very reluctant to use a stethoscope when that first came out. But once they realized how valuable that was for them to actually be more efficient in what it is that they were doing, then it became widely adopted. And I think we'll see the same thing here. As we see that value, both on the doctor side and on the patient side, then that would, they will be widely adopted. What an exciting time it is to actually practice medicine. We have great challenges before us, but also better solutions than medicine has ever had before. So I'm excited to come back to talk to you in a year or three years or five years and talk about what we've accomplished since the, the time this video was made.